Hi, George here. We're going to be looking at two programs, Adobe's Photoshop Elements program, this is version 2024, and also Adobe's Lightroom Classic program, again, version 2024. And we'll take a look at the similarities and the differences between these two. With Photoshop Elements, it's a single payment, and then you have the program. If you want to upgrade, you can then repurchase a program each year. So if you bought the program every single year, it would cost about $80 if you use their upgrade plan. Let's take a real fast look at that pricing. And that's right here. This is the Adobe website on their Elements Family section. And here is the Photoshop Elements right here. And the normal price is, say, $100. And the upgrade price is about $20 less right down there, $79.99, basically $80 for the upgrade price. So if you purchase this every single year, which is what I do, then you're paying $80 per year for this program. Let's now go over and take a look at Adobe's Lightroom program. And this is the part of the Lightroom program that is very similar to what we were just looking at over there on Photoshop Elements. This is the library section here in Lightroom, and we were looking at the organizer section over in Elements. Let's take a look at the price for Lightroom. And here we go. Now with Photoshop Elements, you're actually getting two programs. You're getting the organizer and you're getting the Photoshop Elements editor. And it's kind of similar over here with Lightroom. You're getting Lightroom and you're also getting Photoshop. Now Photoshop is the number one program for doing any kind of photo editing. So it's really a very good deal. Now the least expensive way to get Lightroom in this right here, I'll just scroll down to the bottom of this page and see our prices down here. They have Lightroom, Photoshop, and Lightroom Classic. We're looking at Lightroom Classic and straight down. Here we go, they have a photography plan with 20 gigs of online for $9.99 a month, basically $10 a month. So for one year, you'd be spending 120 per year. And this is a subscription plan as opposed to a single purchase plan. So you'd be paying this every single month. But it's not that far off from Photoshop Elements. So over there, you're paying 80 a year. If you update it every single year, here you're paying 120. It's about 50% more. And since this is a subscription, it's always updated, so you always have the newest version. You don't have to buy a new upgrade every single year to get the updates, it's constantly being updated. It's one of the best reasons to have the subscription as opposed to a single purchase, is that it's constantly updated. Now before we go any further in this discussion, I do wanna say one thing, and that is if you are a professional, at a professional level, basically if you have a business and the business is using photo editing in any way, shape, or form, then you should be getting the Lightroom and Photoshop combination. And if you have a business, you can easily afford $10 a month. Now, if you're not a professional, then that changes this whole discussion. And I personally really like Photoshop Elements. I use it every single day. And it's a great program if you're not concerned about things at that professional level. Now, will the professional level work if you're working online, if you're making things for seeing on the internet or putting into email or putting on a social media, any of those kind of things, this is perfectly professional at that level, or at that use. That's one of the main differences between these two programs, between the Lightroom and Photoshop suite and the Photoshop Elements suite, is that Photoshop Elements works in RGB mode, which is your online image mode, whereas Adobe's Photoshop and Lightroom, they can use the CMYK mode, along with some other modes. If you're doing any projects that involve professional printing, t-shirt designs, book designs, those kind of things where you're working with professional printers and professional level printing machines, then you need to have that CMYK mode. So in that case, Photoshop and Lightroom is the way to go. Now, as far as what these programs actually do, there's a lot of similarities really between Lightroom and Photoshop Elements. The first one, of course, as we can see right here, is the organizer. This is the Photoshop Elements organizer. And what we have here is a way to organize our images quickly and easily. We can do such things as look at the folders that they are in over here, left-hand side. If you want to, we can set up albums and put images into albums just for more ways of categorizing these things. On the right-hand side, we can put in tags in here, add tags to our images. These are different ways of being able to come in and quickly find the images that you're looking for based upon tag searches or based upon folders or albums, things like that. And that's really the main use for the organizer and the main use for the library over in Adobe's Lightroom program is easily finding images that you wanna find out of a very large collection. The bigger your collection, the more valuable this part of the program actually becomes. We can look at information over here. We can do searches, media, places, events. We can go up here to the find menu and do some real fast searches, missing files, version sets, or metadata, which gives you a very advanced way to search for images in a very large catalog. And we can change our zoom level in here, things like that, larger or smaller pictures. 
If you double click on a picture, it takes you right into a large view of this picture, get more information about this image, things like that. Let's go back here to the grid view. So pretty easy to work with and organize in here. And again, this is the Photoshop Elements Organizer. It's a separate program. Let's go over and take a look at the Lightroom program. And it's right here, same basic concept. We have thumbnails of our images in here. We can change our view size right here. Notice we have grid lines and other stuff showing on these. We can right click in here and change what's being displayed on the screen. It's right down here, view options. Here's our grid view. The loop view is the enlarged view. Basically the same concept as we have over there in the organizer. We can look at our folders, left hand side. We can make catalogs, which is similar to albums over in the organizer. We can come over here and add in keywords. So really the same thing. And right now we're in the library part of the Lightroom program. And this is the part that is similar to the organizer. And between the two, I really see very little difference. Now the organizer just looks nicer. It's easier to use. Lightroom has more of a corporate look to it. It's a bit darker. Of course, there is this dark mode and you now can use the dark mode if you want to over in Photoshop Elements 2024. They've added in light and dark modes, but it doesn't really change how it works. Although you can do basically the same stuff. So I don't really see any real dramatic difference between the organizer in Photoshop Elements and the library here over in Lightroom Classic. Where you do see a difference is between the editing parts of the program. Before we start talking about the editor and how that compares with Lightroom, I just want to show you where you can get all of my training courses and that's right here at howtogurus.com. Very easy to find. And I have training here for CorelDRAW, Photoshop Elements, Photoshop, and also Adobe Lightroom. And you'll find the courses right down in here. And again, that's over here in howtogurus.com. And this is the best way to really learn how to use these different programs. We're going to detail explaining how to use all of the menus, all the panels, all the different tools and functions, and give you a complete understanding of these different programs. Okay, let's go back and take a look at the editor. In Lightroom, we'll go over here, and that's the develop section. I'm just going to bring up something at random. We'll just grab this image here. Go to develop. There we go. Here's our develop section. And notice in here we have stuff on the right hand side, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, presence adjustments in here, tone curve, color mixer, color grading, detail, lens corrections. This is really where Lightroom shines. You may have these same kinds of adjustments over inside of Photoshop Elements in the editor, but the quality that you get here is much, much greater. Plus, Lightroom can edit camera raw files, DNG files, things like that directly. Also, the Lightroom program can work in any bit mode. We can work in a 32-bit mode, 24-bit mode, 16-bit mode, 8-bit. Over in Photoshop Elements, you're stuck with 8-bit editing. So you have definite limitations over there. That's why I normally say if you're at a professional level, then you should be using Lightroom or Photoshop. We have our smart collections down here, left-hand side, filter collections. We can look at our history, snapshots, all the stuff we have over there, left-hand side. This is the area that kind of relates back to the library. Across the bottom, we have this film strip, shows everything in our library. Right hand side is where we have all of our develop controls. And everything else up here, map, book, slideshow, print web, these are all kind of output things. Map allows you to tag images with map locations, and then you can see which locations match that map location. There's something similar over in the organizer. Book allows you to create books in here, front cover, back cover, things inside, and then have those printed out if you want to. There's nothing really directly like this, but there are some things that are close over in the organizer. But these are really just output things. Slideshow, you can make a slideshow of your images over in here. Now, personally, I think that the slideshow here inside of the Lightroom program is very old fashioned, very limited. It's very, very corporate feeling. It's really just a straight slideshow, not a whole lot of excitement to it. Over in the Elements program, they have a great slideshow program, puts in all kinds of fancy transitions and music and stuff, and it's very interesting, very easy to use, and makes much better looking slideshows. On print, well, you know, print is basically what print is. You can choose multiple images per page, you can do the same thing on the organizer, you can come in here, add watermarks and so forth. There's no real difference on print. One thing which is different is that you can create a web-based photo album in here inside of Lightroom using your images. You can then upload onto a website. But again, this really is rather old fashioned. This hasn't changed in ages. Even though this isn't available over in Elements, it's not anything that I'd be missing in Elements either. Okay, let's go back here to develop and take a quick look again. 
Now, the reason why there's not a lot of creative stuff over in here is that Lightroom is designed just for basic photo developing, improving your contrast, improving your colors, doing your saturation, doing your sharpness, those kinds of things that photographers like to do. They want to keep their picture the way it is. They just want to improve it. Let's go back over and take a look at the Elements program. Here we go. And for something similar to the develop part of Lightroom, you need to go into the Elements editor. We can get there directly right here by clicking on the editor button. And I brought this over here into the advanced mode. Now all this layer stuff, right hand side, the effects over in here, that's my almost plus selection, the filters, styles, graphics, all this kind of stuff over here, right hand side, this is more like what you'd be doing over inside of Photoshop as opposed to Lightroom. All that creative stuff is really a Photoshop thing. And it's also the main way that you'd be using the Elements Editor as well is for that creative stuff. It's not really a competitor to Lightroom so much as a smaller version of Adobe's Photoshop program. Now there is part of Photoshop Elements that is very much like Lightroom and that's up here, File, and open in Camera Raw. There is a separate editor that is part of Elements that comes in and runs on top of Elements that allows you to edit Camera Raw photos or any photo that you want. It doesn't have to be Camera Raw, but it has the same controls as the Develop section over in Lightroom. Let's take a quick look at that. Let's open a Camera Raw image in here. There we go. And it's actually floating on top of Photoshop Elements. That's the editor in the background there. So it's a separate program that runs from or within Photoshop Elements. On the right hand side, here's our histogram. We have our basic adjustments in here, temperature, tint, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows. Notice that these are the same kinds of controls that you have over there in Lightroom. If you take a look at detail down here, here's our sharpening, noise reduction. We have some color calibration things down here. So we have basically the same types of controls as over there in Lightroom. Now the difference is we're very limited in how many controls we have in here. There's just a few. We do though have different profiles you can work with right up here. There's a lot of things, Adobe Raw, camera matching, artistic profiles. There's a few profiles in here. So we roll over this and get different effects, different looks, black and white and modern in here. Again, just different looks as we roll over these different settings that are saved as profiles. Here's some vintage looks. This makes it very easy to quickly come in and find a look that you like. Now that's one of the main things here with Elements. Everything is very easy to do. It's not designed at a professional level. You don't have to have a whole lot of knowledge to do this. It's designed at a consumer or hobbyist level and you can get to what you want very quickly and very easily. You don't have as many options, but then in most cases, you don't need as many options. So it lets you have what you need to have. Let's go back over to Lightroom. That's right here. Again, here's our standard controls. We have graphs in here giving you better control. Here's your hue, saturation, luminance, color adjustments, far more tools available than over in the Elements Editor. And some new things like this new point color. Loads of fun and you simply click on a color that you want to work with like this and then you can adjust your color very easily from that one point color. But if you go up here to the top and click on Profile, click on Browse, kind of the same thing, artistic, black and white, modern, vintage, basic. Notice how this really is very similar to what we saw over there inside of the Elements Editor. Same basic idea. So as you can see, there's a lot of similarities between the two programs. There's more black and white options in here, by the way, but a lot of similarities. The main difference really is the detail you can get into. Far more controls in Lightroom, far more detail. The controls work in more modes. Let's pop back over to the Elements program. Here we go. And when you're finished here, come over and you can choose open, open as copy. We'll do open. This brings this image over into the Photoshop Elements editor. Notice it says CR2 up here. It's still at this point a camera raw image. If I want to save this, go up here to file and save as, gives you my options. The only options I have are non camera raw options. So I can't save it back to the camera raw and continue my editing there. So you're working natively with Camera Raw over inside of Lightroom. And in there, most cases, you want to save to the DNG file format, digital negative file format. In here, with we'll Save As, we don't have the DNG format available. So we can't save it as a raw format and continue working at that level. The two programs are really very similar in a lot of ways. So as you can see, it really comes down to a question of cost. If you want to have a one price or a subscription, 
and a question of professional level. If you're at a professional level, then you have to have Photoshop and Lightroom. There's just no two ways around that. If you're at a hobbyist level, then I'm sure Elements is all you're going to need. If you want to learn more about how to use Adobe's Photoshop Elements program, I have training for this program. I'll put a link for that in the description and I explain how to use everything in the program. I also have training for Adobe's Lightroom program. If you want to learn more about working with Lightroom, I have that as well. I'll put a link for that also in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And I'll see you next time.